from uh, California for five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Director, okay, watch this stuff. Yeah. Director, right over here. Uh, Director, our kids are dying. They're dying in their schools. They're dying in their communities. And if they're not dying, they're drilling. Every day in America, kids are going through traumatizing mass shooter drills. And so it's just maddening to me that this committee, as our kids are dying, with the responsibility of protecting our kids, the greatest resource in our community, uh, that they would bring you here and attack you, whose job is to protect our kids. I, I, th I look at this as very binary. You can protect your home, you can take your kids hunting, you can shoot for sport, but if you're not on the side of protecting our kids, you're on the side of helping their killers. That's it. You either can help the kids or help the killers. But I also fear that this rhetoric from my colleagues is putting targets on the backs of law enforcement. Director Delabach, have you seen increased threats over the years uh, to your agents and just federal law enforcement in general? It is my deepest honor to be here representing the brave men and women, the career people who work at ATF every day. And what I will say is that I, attacks on a, a political appointee, I, under, I understand, unfortunately, it's just become part of our, our country, but uh, I, would, it, I would say those men and women who are out there doing their job, risking their lives to try to protect people in law enforcement, in all of these functions at ATF, uh, they deserve our respect and support. It is the greatest honor of my professional life uh, to be able to sit here and say, call them colleagues, because they're incredibly brave, dedicated people. And they're not people who have been all personally involved, right? They're there because they care. That's the same with our state and local law enforcement partners. And when they're attacked by political leaders, does it make it does it make it easier or harder for you to recruit people to go into law enforcement to protect our communities? I, I think, you know, uh, it's no uh, surprise that it is, uh, it is difficult to, it's a very difficult and dangerous job to start with, and um, it is more difficult to recruit people and retain people now than ever. Um, and so I just think as a country, uh, we can try to support the brave work that these career people are doing while having our disagreements about about things we feel passionately about. I was raised by a cop, two Republican uh, parents, and they were a pro-police party, but I fear that that is no longer the case. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of our colleagues, uh, campaigns and raises money on a defund the FBI platform. Chip Roy on this committee has often said we need to defund the border and, and the police who are at the border. Uh, Mr. Massey on this committee has called for defunding the ATF. The chairman of this committee, Jim Jordan, recently said in a TV interview that he wants to defund the FBI and the Department of Justice. And this committee's chairman had, before this committee, in just the last 45 days, a witness who said, F cops. When you're the chairman, you can call anyone who walks this earth as a witness. And they called somebody who had recently tweeted this year, F cops. So Mr. Dettelbach, I fear that they continue to put a target on the backs of good, honest, working cops who walk the beats in our community, and I share your concern with that. I also want to ask you if it would surprise you to learn that JAMA Network, which is a medical journal, recently estimated that the economic consequences of gun violence in our community is $557 billion a year. That takes into account police investigations, medical treatment, long-term physical and mental health care, earnings lost to disability or death, criminal justice costs, pain and suffering, and that is equal to 2.6% of America's gross domestic budget, five times the budget of the Department of Education. I hope that eye-popping number, if kids dying in our classroom doesn't get the attention of my colleagues, I hope money will talk to them. But does it surprise you to learn that that's the estimate, $557 billion a year? Uh, I, I don't know about the particular numbers. I know, obviously, violent crime costs our society in many ways. It costs a, a physical, a psychological, uh, community, medical, and financial toll. Thank you. Yield back, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Kentucky, Mr.